Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here, Practicing to Take the GRE General Test, the 10th edition. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 266, question number 13. This is 12 here, but I'm going to about to solve number 13. Before, before, I, before I get into solving number 13, let me quickly go over question number 12 that I already finished uh, taping and I already posted on the YouTube. But I'm going to quickly talk about it. So turn to number 12 for a second. It says, in the first column it says, greatest even factor of 180 that is less than 90. Go back and uh, watch the tape for uh, number 12 and you'll get more out of it. But I felt that I probably made it unnecessarily complicated, so I wanted to go over it one more time very quickly. In the first column it says the greatest even factor of 180 that is less than 90. Well, we are dealing with 180. Where should I put it here? Let's do it here. We are dealing with 180. And since I am looking for an even factor, the easiest and the quickest way to find the greatest even factor of 180 is to divide 180 by the lowest even number that you can find. The lowest even number that I can find is, is 2. 180 divided by 2 is 90. 180 divided by 2 is 90. But uh, uh, I didn't mean to say lowest even number, I meant to say the lowest factor that you can find. The lowest factor, of course, you can, that you can find is 1, but dividing 180 by 1 is not going to get you anywhere. So the next factor of 180 is 2, as you can see right here. So if you divide 180 by 2, you get a 90, but this, they're asking us to find the greatest even factor of 180 that is less than 90. So let's move on then. So we can use 90. Let's divide 180 by 3. If you divide 180 by 3, you get 60. There you go, that's an even number. So that is your greatest even factor of 180 that is less than 90. In other words, greatest even factor of 180 other than 90. There you go. In the second column, we're looking for the greatest odd factor. So I'm just going to continue. So first we divided 180 by 2, then we divided 180 by 3. Let's divide 180 by 4. And the reason we are dividing by the smallest factor possible is because we are looking for the largest number. 180 divided by 4, well I know half of 180 is 90 and half of 90 is 45. There you go. And that is your greatest odd factor right here, as you can see. So in the second column we have 45, in the first column we have 60, the answer was A. Let's move on to number 13. Number 13 on the same page. Number 13 says, in circles C1 and C2, and they give you two circles, they look like this. In circles C1 and C2, let's call it, they call this C1, they call this C2. And they tell you that this distance P to R is same as this distance Q to R. The question simply is, how do the circumferences of, the two, of these two circles compare? In the first column they give you the circumference of C1, this circle right here. In the second column they give you the circumference of C2. Now the trick here, the reason why vast majority of the people who took the exam got this question wrong, only 39% of the people only 39% of the people got this question right when this exam was given. In other words, about three-fifths of, three of them got it wrong. And the reason why these people are getting it wrong is because they are looking at the pictures and they're going by what they see. What you have to remember in the GRE is what you see is definitely not what you get. In other words, another way of saying the same thing is that contrary to what you may remember, contrary to what you remember from many, 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 many moons ago, when you took the SAT, SAT was a different animal. In the SAT, all the pictures that are given to you, they are all drawn to scale. In other words, in other words, if, 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 if a triangle looks like this, on the SAT, if it looks like this, you can safely assume that side AB is smaller than side BC because it looks smaller. 
But on the GRE, if I give you a picture like this, and unless I tell you, unless I tell you that AB is smaller than BC, unless 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 you're told that, you cannot assume that you cannot take that you cannot uh, take those liberties in, on the GRE. In other words, pictures are not drawn to scale. What you see is not what you're getting here. The trouble why people why the reason why the, why people are having trouble on this question is because they are merely looking at the bloody thing. They're just staring at the bloody thing. And if you just stare at that, those two circles are purposely drawn to be of equal size. Here, of course, I, I inadvertently I ended up making this one just a little bit bigger, quite inadvertently. I, I didn't mean to do that. But if you look at the picture that they give you, the two circles look exactly the same size and they are, they are given in the same size on purpose. What is missing here is that the two circles would have been the same size, the circumference of the two circles would, would have been this equal if the point P, if point P and point Q were the centers of circles C1 and C2. If I had told you, if I had told you that point P is the center of, point of, of C1, and if I had told you that point Q is the center of C2, then of course this distance would have been the same as this distance because in, in, the, in that case the distance PR had, had, had P been the center of, had P been the, had P been the center of circle C1, in that case P would have been, would have been, it's quite hypothetical, in that case P would have been uh, if it were if it were the center, then uh, rather if P were the center, then the distance PR would have been the radius. And similarly, if Q were the center, you see, if Q were quite hypothetical, it's, that is not the case here because we are not told that Q is the center. But if Q were the center, in which case R to Q would have been the radius, and of course the radius the radii would have been equal because. If this is a center going all the way to the outer edge and this is a center going to the outer edge, those two radii would have to be the same. That's all. And if the, if the, if the two radius, two radii are equal, then the circumference would have been equal. But we are not told that P and Q are the centers. So for all I know, for, so therefore for all we know, so here C2, if P and Q were the centers of C1 and C2, then C1 would have been equal to C2. But that is not the case. We are not told that. If they were, but, but we do not know that. So for all I know, the situation that we have at hand could be something like this. What you have to do is exaggerate the things. Could be like this. Let me retro it a little bit better. And I'm getting paranoid about the time. Let me check in the back so I don't have to rush like, like a madman. Yes, I am quite right about getting paranoid about the time because it's eight minutes into the clip. Here, here let's try one more time slowly. Sometimes, sometimes it takes longer to try to do things fast. Did you get the idea? Did you get the idea? In this case, I could draw two circles like this. This would be R, this would be P, this would be Q. In this case, P to R would still be equal to R to Q. But as you can clearly see, the two circles are not of the same circumference. There's a big difference. We cannot take liberty in assuming that these two circles are equal because we do not know if P and Q are the centers. That's what it is. Because if this were, if, if, if this guy is the center of this small circle, then this Q is definitely not the center of the large circle because center of the large circle, the large circle is so cold because it has a larger radius. This Q obviously is not the center. Center would have been somewhere here. You see? We do not know where P and Q are located. And therefore, the answer is D. We do not know. The answer is D. And that's all I can do here. There is nothing, there is no uh, mathematical solution that I can present to you. That's all you have to realize, that these two are not the centers. That these two points that are given to you, P and Q, are not necessarily the centers. If they were, the two circumferences would have been equal. The answer is D here. Uh, in, 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 in any case, the least that you could have done here is, 
literally never mind then. I was about to say since this is the hard questions, you should realize that C is definitely a sucker answer. But of course, in your exam, you would not know this is the hard questions because uh, in in the new format that you're going to take, this this is a paper and pencil format. In the exam that you're going to take, they are not arran arranged in any order, so you can't really tell if, if a question that is presented to you is meant to be a hard question or easy question. Anyway, so scratch that part. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, face-to-face -face tutoring, or over the phone or over the internet, uh, or if there is anything else that I can help you with the GRE, just get hold of me. Go to my website at www.preppreprep4gre.com or www.keshwaniprep.com. All right, and send me an email. Thank you.